An uneasy feeling has been your constant companion since you left Goodwater. Every little sound in the forest makes you fear you've been discovered by a horde of orcs. But you reach the end of the day without bumping into any of the greenskins. It seems as though Vrakus has granted you one more day in Girdlegard. As night begins to fall, you pass a large oak tree and decide to call it a day. Near the oak tree is an abandoned camp with a fireplace, which appears to be a couple of days old. You swing yourself up the trunk and then pull up your baggage after you. You're prepared to sleep in a tree like a bird if it means escaping the orc's attentions. You sling your rope twice around your stomach and the trunk of the tree to stop you from falling accidentally. You close your eyes and dream. You see North Pass and smell the fresh icy wind that sweeps over the peaks of Great Blade and Dragon's Tongue. But the harmony is interrupted by the hideous roar of an unending flood of orcs throwing itself unceasingly against the fortification. You smell the disgusting green blood of the orcs and taste the rancid fat of their armour on your tongue. The bitter taste becomes stronger until it's unbearable and wrenches you out of your dream. You open your eyes and are surprised at the brightness as a glance at the sky confirms that it's still night. Your eyes move towards the ground, and what you see makes the blood in your veins freeze. I am Sintras of Son Balsur. My master, Nod On the Doublefold, ruler of the perished land, has elected you, the lords of Taboribor, to be the sword that conquers the south. You mean, you want us to put our necks on the line and be killed by some magus? Lot Yonan and the others will be taken care of. Your task is to create a diversion in the south until my master's plan succeeds. And which of us? is the leader. The one that conquers the most land. So Kragma will be the new Grand Lord. He glares at Ushnox and Bashkog. The Kragma Shore Tribe will conquer the most land. Never! We will overwhelm the cities of the Red Bloods quicker than you can suck the marrow from a bone. We shall see. You can't believe what you're hearing. If the beasts of Teon ride into battle together, catastrophic cycles lie ahead for Girdlegard. The night in the oak tree was the worst of your life. You spent every single moment afraid that you'd be found and savaged by the orcs. But as the first rays of sun broke through the treetops, the orcs abandoned their camp and left without discovering you. You're overcome by the urge to vomit. You have, of course, heard the stories, but seeing with your own eyes that orcs actually do eat humans is a long way from just reading about it. This is the place. I knew it was here. Come on, then. Find that stupid necklace. Hey, Fushka! In front of you! <laughs> a grounding! Perfect for a spotted breakfast! You know that you're no warrior, but you want to face the orcs as a child of the Divine Smith. Perhaps you'll manage to kill at least one of them, so as not to appear so undwarven in Varakas's eyes. I'll give you something to chew on. Varakas made us of stone. Oink, oink, little piggies! <laughs> By Barrow and Spirit! 
How did you manage to lose your weapon? Go and get it, and this time, hold it tight! Hey! That one was mine! You're just too slow, dear brother! Too slow? Just wait! And what now? Yes? As good as done! Say goodbye! <laughs> On my way. What is it? Pow! Another one bites the dust. Huzzah! What is it? Huh? At once. End it. Yes. Yeah. And what now? Who's huh? next? Uh. Say goodbye forever. Uh. Huh? They're hitting me pretty what hard. <laughs> yes. Too easy. Yeah. What is it? He hardly put up a fight. Yes. Put up a fight! Yeah. Who's next? What is it? Yes? Say goodbye forever! Uh-huh. Understood. Attack! Huh? Yes, yes! All right. As good as done. Huh? And what now? Come here, you. I'm with you. What is it? Huh? End it. Attack! What is it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oink oink. That's all. No more orcs. Well fought, young friend. Do you happen to be tongue dill? Well fought? But he fought like a... like a... Boindil, what do you expect? He grew up amongst the humans. Who... who are you and how do you know my name? My name is Boindal Hookhand of the Clan of the Swinging Axes. This is my brother, Boindil Doubleblade. We've been sent to find you. 
Call me our heart. Are there any more piggy snouts around here? There was a meeting last night. The Elfar serve a certain Nod On who calls himself Lord of the Perish Land. They have enlisted three orc hordes to cause unrest in the south. Did you hear that, Boandal? Peggy Snouts! The Elfar from San Balzur and the orcs from Taborabor are working together? And could ally with the orcs from the Perish Land. The twins look at you solemnly. You all know what that would mean for the people of Girdelgard. You turned up at just the right moment, but are you sure it's me you're looking for? The High King Gundrabor sent us to fetch you and bring you to Ogre's death in the Secondling Realm in the South. So he received the letter from my master? And am I a Secondling? Well, something like that, I guess. We've got to... Yeah, 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 I know what you're gonna say, but it's our duty to get you to the Ogre's Death Fortress in one piece. I thought the duty of dwarves was to protect the innocent in Girdelgard. Lot Yonan and King Brauron will take care of the orcs. We three must be careful. You're not exactly a warrior. But he has broad shoulders and broad hands. There's hope for him yet. So when you've got the chance to split a few orc skulls, you should take it. I would be happy to follow you into the realm of the Second Links. In truth, there is nothing I would rather do. But first, I must travel to Black Saddle and return some things to a former Famulus of Lot Yonan. Black Saddle isn't exactly on our way. It's on my way. We can head south as soon as I've carried out Lot Yonan's orders. Well, <laughs> he's certainly got the stubbornness of a dwarf. <laughs> Perhaps we'll be able to make a real dwarf of him on the way. All right, we'll accompany you. The sooner we find that Famulus, the quicker we can get back to the mountains. I'll have to send Lot Yonan a message by Carrier Pigeon on the way. And if we happen to stumble upon a couple of orcs... I like you, but we'll have to find you another name. Bolifar. It's about as good as Lipsmith, Paddletosh or Blufflegrump. It is stupid. Senseless and definitely not a name of honor. What are you good at? I'm good at reading. Reading? <laughs> You're a scholar? You and the twins approach Goodwater. A huge army of orcs has surrounded the village on three sides. You see smoke and fire and hear the battle cries. The village is holding out, but for how long? Oh, now it's getting exciting! Archers in front of them, three dwarves behind. I wouldn't like to be in their shoes.
quickly. Understood. What is it? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Of uh, course. Say goodbye forever! <laughs> I need help over here! Quick! Huh? Ow! Hey! What is it? With pleasure! Yes? Attack! Vile creature! Huh? Yes! Say goodbye forever! Too easy! Yeah. And what now? Did you see that, men? Now they are warriors! Hey, you down there! I'll send you some reinforcements! Let's stick it to those runs! Alright then, stay close to us. Fighting spirit lessens with every fallen comrade. After Kragnar's death, they finally attempt to flee the battlefield. Very few escape the mercenaries' arrows.
The leader of the mercenaries approaches you, surrounded by his soldiers. His expression is one of recognition, caution, perhaps even awe. You're the groundling uh, dwarf who reinforced our gate a couple of days ago. He served us very well, just as your axes have. A young mercenary runs towards you. He has something in his hands that he clearly wants to get rid of quickly. Commander, we found this on their leader. It... it feels strange. The commander looks at the amulet in the man's hand and makes no suggestion that he plans to touch it himself. You take your opportunity. May I? You take the amulet and can feel a tingling on your skin. It is clearly magical. Keep it as a sign of our gratitude. The commander bids you farewell with a short nod and moves away. It would seem he thinks he's made a good deal. The farmstead has been plundered, ravaged, and part set on fire. But not all of the buildings are destroyed. You call out for any survivors, but there is no answer. You split up and search for signs of life in the burned-out ruins of the farmstead. You take on the main building. You don't find anything, apart from a charred doll. And the twins have no luck either. There are no signs of life. With a heavy heart, you decide to turn around and continue on your way with the twins. Several wagons full of building materials pass you by on the way to Goodwater. The village's fortifications still show evidence of the orcs' attack, but they are making good progress with the repair work. There they are, the dwarves! Good water saviors, come in! There's always a warm meal and a welcoming bed for you here. I could get used to this. You arrive at a crossroads with a tavern on the corner. A warm light is emanating from its window, lighting up the road around it. A stone sculpture of a sheep stands in front of the door, and above it a sign, swaying gently in the breeze, reads, The Stone Sheep. You observe the surroundings, but the road is empty, and no one leaves the tavern. You notice a broken window on the first floor, which has been boarded up with planks. Something wet drips onto your nose, and you look up to the cloudy sky with a bad-tempered expression. Huh! <laughs> Why are we standing here and just getting wet from the outside? You enter the tavern with a determined stride, and are greeted by a thick wall of pipe smoke. The dozen or so drinkers at the tables turn towards you, then give each other astonished and slightly worried looks. In the tavern, there are half a dozen people sitting at the tables, and just as many at the bar, clearly farmers and labourers from the surrounding villages. Boindil pays no attention to the other guests and trudges over to a table. Together with his brother, you follow him and sit down. The landlord comes out from behind the bar. What can I get you? You hear surly muttering from one of the tables. What are groundlings doing showing their faces here, now of all times? You stand up and turn to the room. This round's on me. The faces of the guests and the landlord brighten up immediately. The landlord gets to work pulling everyone a beer and handing out the tankards. Some of the guests say cheers to you as they get their drinks.
You turned to the guest who'd muttered something about groundlings. And why is it so strange that we're here? The man glances up briefly and then stares drunkenly at his tankard and mutters with a slur. Don't play the innocent. The orcs are terrorizing our lands. And whose fault is it? You let them in. I was not at the stone gateway and I don't know what happened. But you can be sure of one thing. Dwarves would never cooperate with orcs. We kill them no sooner than we say them. Or my name isn't Boindle Doubleblade. The drunkard and his neighbor are given a start. They mumble an apology and turn their attention to the beer in front of them. We're tired and long for a proper bed. Of course, gentlemen. You spend a restful night in the tavern and then head off on your way again. By the evening campfire, Boindil rummages around in his rucksack and pulls out a cheese wrapped in a cloth. He sticks a fist-sized piece on a spit and grills it on the fire. Ah, there's nothing better than grilled cheese at the end of a long day. The smell it gives off makes you hold your breath. Oh, oh it smells like my socks after weeks of marching in my boots. Oh, picky, are you? Hardly surprising, considering you were brought up by humans. It's ruined your taste. Boindil holds the stinky cheese at the end of the stick under your nose. Eat and stop complaining. You pull the warm piece of cheese from the stick. It tastes dreadful. Your fingers will smell of it for the next few days, and probably your mouth will too. <laughs> 